group of students, Grenada Student Association from the UWI Mona and St. Augustine. And this would be an extensive conversation uh, to give the general public and the students some more information as to what happened during the revolution. So this, again, would be a... We were trying to make it an hour, but I just know that it, there's so much to discuss with a list of panelists that, that range from uh, Mr. Livingston Nelson, Pr Francis Reyes Peters, uh, Pargy, uh, Pargy Chubbin. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot to discuss, and we have the panelists, and we're going to be discussing right here, and we want you guys to participate right now by sharing the program. So go ahead and share it right now. This is Grenada Revolution, a deeper look. Let us talk. And that's what makes me happy Is then I come to realize Oh God, my country is a paradise hey. I love my Grenada My homeland forever Sing the chorus louder Tell them about Grenada The land of my grandfather She will always prosper Grenada is such a paradise, but a lot of folks don't realize. Guys, during this engagement in our, our history, it's important to understand what happened. In, in for us to shape a brighter future for ourselves, for our children, it's very, very important that we understand the history and what our nation has been through. And this particular event is being facilitated on Ride Along, but it was put together by a group of uh, students, as I said earlier, from the uh, University of the West Indies. I'm happy to, to include on the panel right now those students here with us. Let me see if I could bring them in. We have Anel, uh, we have Joselle, we have Terrell, and um I, first of all let me let me let me first of all let me let me drop my music down a little bit because i really want to applaud these students for the job that they have done in bringing this conversation aboard uh today let's start with anel uh, anel welcome to this exclusive this program uh facilitated by the Uni university of the west indies tell us about your initiative and why you thought it was important to bring this conversation on here today. Good morning, everybody. My name is Arnel Waldron and I am the president of the Grenada Students Association of UE St. Augustine. This week is our Revol Revolution Week and it started the 12th of October up to the 19th of October. And usually every year we have someone coming in to tell us about the revolution, some impact, who would have studied in the past about it. But this year we thought with COVID and all of us at home, why don't we take a different angle? Everybody, it's so easy now to get persons to come onto a computer and have a conversation. Why don't we try to get persons who were actually a part of the revolution to share about their experiences with us? All right, great, great, great. Uh, and to Joselle, uh, sorry, Terrell, uh, Terrell, tell us about your involvement and uh, a little bit more about the student body at the Mona and St. Augustine. All right, well, um, my name is Terrell Shells, and I am the vice president of the Grenada Students Association in St. Augustine, um, Trinidad and Tobago. And for me personally, um, the, 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 the group GSA has really opened its arms towards all students, but in particular those that are of Canadian descent. And so it was like a home away from home. So it was very easy for me to get involved and you know feel comfortable. Right now, this initiative was one I find that, that is very, very, very important. And, and I really commend our president. Um, Arnel Waldron, and also the other GSE um, president, right, for putting putting this together. And I, I would like to say thank you, um, um, Junior, because this is a discussion that really needs 
um, to happen more often up and with, with more persons, right? We just do not part as it is. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Um, let's add some of the panel on right now um, to assist us to understand what happened um, uh, during this time of the revolution. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Livingston Nelson, who is an activist. He's also the founder of the Tivoli Drummers. Um, Mr. Livingston Nelson, sir, welcome to this very important discussion here today. And I would like to say thanks um, to Anel, Terrell, and the other members of the GSA for inviting me to participate in this program. So I think it is a really good initiative, particularly the fact that the young people are showing interest in our history and by extension our culture. So I think it's a very good initiative that has been followed. Um, do you want me to go right through, Brunel, or you want me to just no, introduce no, myself? No, no. I just introduce everyone on the panel right. and then we'll go back in. Also right. Joyce on the panel, he's a playwright, uh, all around good guy, um, Mr. Francis Urias Peters. So much to be said about Mr. Francis Urias Peters. I'll have him say the rest of it. Francis, welcome to this very important discussion here today. Thank you, Junior. And I must say here, I was never part of, of the revolution. The thing I, be, I believe I am, I am in the panel here today is that I did write a play called Redemption Time, which was set during the Gary and the Revolutionary Era. And as a person who believes that history must be seen, not just from the, um, the past perspective, but how it affects the, the, the future. So I'm, I'm very happy to be, to be on, on the panel and looking forward to the discussion. Absolutely, absolutely. And joining us also on the panel, a very important uh, person, a, a very important figure uh, in this discussion here. Uh, it would be remiss of us not to have him, uh, uh, in fact. Uh, Mr. Paji Turbin. Paji, welcome to this very important discussion, sir. If you could just put your, come up a little bit because we're not seeing you too well. Yes. Good right. morning. Thank you. Thank you for the students. Wonderful initiative. Let me first of all say that um, who I am as for the revolution is second lieutenant of the People's Revolutionary Army, the lowest possible commission rank, and an applicant member of the Negro Movement, the lowest possible level of membership. As much as I want to compliment the students on the move, I think this is only phase one of a process that is now at primary school level and to reach to their university level, I think you have to fish deeper and, and, and wider to get a real deeper view of what went on. Secondly, let me just say that we are now in October and we're dealing with the revolution. We are dealing with the tail end period of the revolution, you know, that October period. I, I, I suggest to them that when March comes, we do a similar program and bring in more of the emphasis on the making of the revolution. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that the students would actually, actually love that uh, because it's, it's information that we don't hear a lot of. We hear a lot about American history. Well, we hear a lot about so much other history, uh, but we don't hear enough about our own history. And I think it's important that we start engaging this conversation. So kudos to the people, to the to the students, uh, the GSA at the, uh, the UW, uh, University of the West Indies. So we're going to go straight ahead, guys, because we don't have a lot of time. Hopefully um, we get more time because there is so much to discuss. Um, so we'll, we'll start with you, Mr. Franz, uh, Mr. Livingston Nelson. I want us to touch a little bit on the... Uh, the Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister of Grenada, Eric Matthew Gary, uh, talk a little bit about the person and his leadership style. So, thank you again, Junior. Um, <clears throat> let me just say that I will try to be brief. So, uh, some of the details um, that normally should go into it, uh, I probably would leave out. But Uncle Gary, of course, born in Dunfermline, went to the Lafayette School. He left for Aruba. He was a supervisor in the oil field in Aruba. He came to Grenada. He came back to Grenada on holiday to marry his lover, Miss Cynthia Gary. 
because he was such an activist in, in the IFL in Aruba, on return, they, 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 they suspended him, his, his job. They fired him from his job. He had no choice. So at that time, Gary wrote in what they call the SO News, which was a, a main publication in Aruba, that he's coming back to Grenada to change and to reform Grenada. So on his return, he went back again to, to Don Fumbling, where he was living, and he started agitating. So he went from estate to estate, speaking to the agricultural workers, mainly in the rural, in the rural community, to the King Belt, as far down as, um, well, in, in St. George, you know, Cascot area. Um, deploring the condition he was working in. What was the condition? The condition of the estate then was that persons were working sometimes 12 hours, 13 hours a day, um, having to have his cocoa, picking up nutmeg, using mass and to light. They have to work as well carrying as much as 20 baskets of seaweed that they use to fertilize the land or sometimes cow manure. That was the task for day. Some workers started as early as 11 years old. Some of them, their parents, women workers, um, they were assisted sometimes by the children because they couldn't have time to make the task in some time cut lashing or clearing the area that was designated for them to work. That was the condition at the time. So Gary came and he challenged that. And he challenged the colonial government. Um, he fought for trade union rights because he later on formed the trade union movement, GMMIWU, that was, you know. He fought against the racial prejudice that was taking place because it was not just about a class struggle, but one with race in how um, we were treated in Grenada. So that was a condition that he met, and that was what he was fighting against. Um, so at the very beginning, Gary was hailed as a hero. And soon after starting to organize, he put some demand to the, the authorities, increased pay, decreasing the working condition, et cetera, et cetera, decreasing the hours of work, decreasing the time, the fact that when women pregnant, they should um, be released and still be getting paid. But the colonial um, government at the time, because we were controlled by England, they refused. And then came, he came back in 1949, I forgot to say that, from Aruba. By 1951, when they refused, he initiated a program where you, he called the agricultural workers to strike. That led to some of the workers taking it into the hand. Some people said initiated by uncle. And they started burning some of the estates, the cane field, some of the buildings. And that, pro, pro, that time in Grenada we call Sky Red. Sky Red started spreading and getting out of hand. He was arrested. I cannot remember exactly the name of the ship right now, but it's HMS. They put him on the ship, Gary on the ship, um, to remove him from the island. So they did arrest Gary. Um, because of that, the workers then recognized that they took him away. They continued burning more of the estate. And they finally met and had a truth where he negotiated for decrease in decrease hours in condition. Um, increase in pay from 50 cents to 80 cents for men, from 40 cents to 70 cents for women at that time. So that was what happened. Um, so he it, it, it continued agitating and mobilizing in terms of the trade union movement. And then came Hurricane Janet in 1955. After Hurricane Janet, um, for the first time, he demanded um, from the colonial authority that women um, start giving pans, they were giving boots to work. Um, they, 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 they met some of, some of the conditions and Gary went actually and had, um, you know, more, some, some more benefits that actually came to the workers. Came in 1962, uh, there about, he was then accused of having for squander mania because the, the finances of the state were all in the colonial hands. So within the time he was at the squander media, somebody ran for election and he was banned from participating at the time, you know, he was banned from participating. And, and after he was released, there was a by-election and then he again became the premier. Um, so he, he had actually lost um, the election, sorry, from 62, he had lost um, in 1968. Gary then became, um, came back into the fall of leadership. And let me just tell you, between 62 and, and, and 68, it was seen by a lot of persons because he was fighting against the, the, the landed aristocracy. Um, he had no wealth. 
he, the, the union, the small sums of money that was given to the union, he basically you uh, leave out of that. But he had he had lost a lot of a clout during the time. So in 1968, um, the GNP, the GNP that was in power had made a promise that they were going to have a unitary union with Trinidad, you know, Trinidad, one union. And when they came into power, they failed to pursue on that. So they really came back into power in 1968. And it's from that time he saw his role as trying to acquire more wealth. Um, he passed a law in 1968 where he had a land acquisition act which allowed him to acquire in excess of 30 acres of land. That land then led him to have land distribution today, which is known as Land for the Landless Program. The Providence Fund was introduced. The Providence Fund is precursor to the NIS. Um, for the first time, workers started getting back pay after, right? There was a similar, there was a, a special situation I must take note of. Um, the, the, estate, the estate in Boulogne was confiscated. It was owned by a white lady from England. She was living here at that time. Her name was Chatterway. And when Gary decided, because he passed the act to acquire the land, um, she said, a, a, a dog like you, a little black dog like you, could never get my land. Gary said, that little black dog would bite you. So she left for England on holiday. When she came back, Gary said, he went on the airport in person and he said, you cannot step land on Grenada. She was then sent back or deported back to England. Um, but between 1960 to 1972, there were certain things that came to Gary, certain events that he accomplished that he can boast of. I will go through it quite quickly. One was Expo 69. I cannot go into detail with all that happened, but it was one of the most cultural, revitalizing events in that part of the world at that time. It was, I mean, a, a real leap into vision, if you can, not just a, a step. He had a governor, a, a lady governor that was as black as you can as you can get. Um, Miss Wall, we, Grenada won Miss Wall competition by name Jennifer Houston. Gary introduced the National Zoo. He introduced National Agricultural Scholarship to Guyana. Um, agricultural officers are, were attached to primary schools to teach agricultural science, uni school. The Grossmith Commission increased salaries to by 70% to government workers. Emphasis was placed on tourism and the New York chapter for the first time was established. Nursing aids and nursing assistance were introduced. Several old parish medical centers were built. The science block, a science block was built for GBSS. There was a huge increase in scholarship to secondary schools. School bus were introduced. Several sporting complex, many playing fields were built. So this was Gary in his heyday and Gary bringing the benefit of the revolution. Um, because of all the power and the goodwill that accrued to Gary, um, things started happening. By 1970, by 1969, people like Maurice Bishop and them came into the land. In 1969, he formed what you call MAP. By 1970, there was a major movement in Trinidad, the Black Power Movement led by Geddes Granger. Maurice Bishop and him was very close where they're thinking for the they they professing more right, more power to black people, um, recognizing our, 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 inherit, our, um, our, our inheritance. Um, and one of the famous things that happened because um, the, the, the map people and you had the Jews, or the Jew that was from St. David's, who became probably the most political active force after the DNP. Um, so they started agitating. And when the Black Power came into four around the 72 era, Gary started saying, when your neighbor was on fire, you got to wet yours. So Gary now started to change from this all-encompassing person and started putting measures in place in order to quell the oppositions that were building in Grenada against his reign. So within four years that, as premier, Gary changed seven, com seven commissioners. Um, by April of 1973, um, the, 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 the forces, what they call the Mongols Gang. Now, the Mongols Gang was a, gang, was a group of persons that Gary selected. They were low in terms of, in terms of academic um, achievement, but they were really tough persons. So Gary selected those persons to go out in the field to hunt and hold Mongols. Later on, those guys and them, I don't know if it's for the loyalty or the city need, 
they became Gary ex officio security forces. Everywhere he went, the Mongols gang were there. And the Mongols gang started flaunting levels of authority on the Grenadian public. I mean, people were meet and just slap baton, they were beaten with baton, baton. They were not part of the official police force or the GVC at the time, but that is what was taking place. For a matter of fact, in 1973, the era at the time when you hear the police stop his car or the policemen stop in a vehicle, people just scatter, you just run. Now, in Greenville, by H.M. Bola, one morning, one hour, one afternoon, a young man named Jeremiah Richardson refused to run. He just stood there. He did nothing. A revolver was pulled and he was shot point blank in his temple. He died on the spot. The new Jewel movement by that time had um, formed because in 1973, Jewel and Mark had come together, the Jewels from St. David with Teddy Victor, you know, white man, formed the, with, with, the, um, with Mark, with Maurice Bishop, and others from St. St. George area. They fought against the locking up or the blocking up of the Lapsa Jess Beach by one named Bronglo, and they had formed the New Jewel Movement. The New Jewel Movement now became the main opposition force in Grenada. And they took up the cause of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah now, the, the, the cause. Um, at his funeral, people came out in the numbers. And after the funeral, they just spontaneous demonstration. They went onto the airport, they blocked the airport, and for two consecutive days, they were unable, they were unable to land on Pearl's airport at that time, 1973. There was one man covering it, his name was Alistair Hughes, Alistair Hughes, who was a main journalist at the time, was slapped and coughed. Um, Twelve persons got shot. The Mongols gang had became a force to reckon with. So you had the official police that usually stand by and let the Mongols gang do their do. On the 2nd of June, 1973, in the secondary school in Victoria, um, a young man named Michael Grumsey Bonard was killed by police. Again, the students in, 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 the, in the Victoria area rose up and demonstrated. So Gary had announced that he was recruiting the toughest and roughest roughneck in town on November the 5th. So the Mongols gang now was then incorporated in what, in, into the service of the state. So they now became the official body, they call themselves the rural constable. So um, on Monday, January, no, on, on November, sorry, the 18th, um, 1973, at a meeting scheduled in Grenville, um, Bishop Radix, there were six of them that came up to have a meeting in Grenville to mobilize against the Gary regime. Uh, this district, the Eastern District, was supervised by one um, innocent Belma. They decide you cannot have any meeting in Grenville. And so um, the leadership of the NGM went and hide by H.M. Bola place. The police went knocking at the door. H.M. Bola refused to unlock the door. They gave him three come. They say, by the third come, we do not open the door. We will break it down, and we will come down there with you to write at you. He yielded. The men were released. Six of them were beaten. Those guys and them were taken into the Grenville police station um, and, and, and given what I call a serious beating. They were bloody. Six men were put into that cell, very small cell. They were stripped down to the underwear. They slept there. You had doctors like Gibbs and others that came, lawyers that came to find out what is the status. Rupert Bishop at that time came to find out what was happening with his son. The police at the station said nothing is wrong with them. They are okay. They are fine. You cannot see them at this moment. So those guys slept with all the blood and everything in the cell at Grenville. You understand? The following day, they were brought into the magistrate court. They were granted bail. By the in, by by so the, the, the struggle continued, and that was the atmosphere by January on the 21st of January. And I uh, sorry, let me just back up that was considered as bloody Sunday in Greenville. Yeah, and January, uh, so, so, so listen, this is a wealth of information. Uh, I, I really didn't want to stop you at all because this okay. type of information is what is essential to for the students and for everyone to understand our history but i just wanted to pinpoint a particular aspect of what you were speaking about as it relates to the formulation of the new jewel movement i don't know if paji have a, a perspective on this or if you could take off from there 
um, the formulation of the of the new jewel movement, and what were the main reason behind that formulation of the of, of the NGM? Paji, you want to jump in here? My brother, un unfortunately, I am not an authority on the formation of the, the NGM or NGM. Um, I came here with a specific um, mindset to, to just share my experience. I no really, problem. really can, can, no can speak to the formation of the Jewel Movement. I, I oh. could speak to me being, me being energized by the Jewel Movement and going, going involved in, 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 in anti theory um, activities led by the New Jewel Movement. But I can't speak to the formation but, of the New Jewel Movement but, but at all. At all. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let me Julian, yes. So maybe, maybe I don't know if that information is good enough as to give the background, and we could go into the new Jewel movement. Um, yeah. But just the last last item that I think really helped crystallize was that on Bloody Monday, that was January the twenty fourth, nineteen seventy four, a large demonstration was planned in the town of Saint George. Um, it was a demonstration considered by the group of twenty two, meaning you have all the other trade unions um, in Grenada. Um, that came together, nurses, a lot of the um, professional bodies, the, the churches, they all came together to express opposition to, to the Gary regime and the kind of brutality that was taking place. So, let, so that, that is what the background. But let me just say, as I said, in 1969, the, the, the Maurice Bishop Adam came to form MAP. But by that time, you had a Jewel movement that started in St. David with Teddy Victor, um, people like Sandbass, etc. Um, those guys and them, they started having meetings and demonstrations, they organized farm and cooperatives, and they had a, a, a paper, a newspaper, that was really making waves and started to capture the attention of religion people. So they were bridging the gap between what you call the GULP and the G, GNP, but they were almost taking over the role of the GNP. And um, there was a major event, as I said, in, um, in St. David, where this man, um, Brown Law had locked the gate and prevented people from accessing the Lassages Beach. The people in St. David, um, there was a guy, his name was Sebastian, that decided, listen, man, I've, I grew up here, I've been using that part for um, time immemorial. I am not going to stop from going there. So he used to tie his car and, and basically go inside and do what he had to do. The police arrested him for breaking the law and for trespassing. But eventually he won his day in court because he he was then said that since he was using that from sense time from sense time immemorial, he had the right to continue using the area to graze his cow, his cattle, etc. So he won his case. And then the the the, the jewel, because there was no NGM at the time, they had what they call a public trial. The magistrate at the time was one named Hotsnasin. So they then had a trial and the trial Gary. And they, you know, of course, the trial was unofficial. So they tried Gary and they found him on several charges of corruption and brutality. And the, the crowd, after that demonstration, decided that they are going to break down the gate. So after the verdict, they went and they broke down the gate. And in they broke down the gate and they went over. Of course, the police were there, they came, um, but the crowd was so huge that they broke down the gate and people couldn't care. They rushed with speed and they went on to the Lassages Beach to build it in full clothes because everybody wanted to see who force would get a chance to bathe on the beach at the time because that was the beach, that was the land. Um, and in the ensuing case, a number of persons were arrested. And that is when Mark, people like Maurice Bishop Lawyers and them start coming in to represent those persons that were then charged. And eventually Mark and Jewel came together to form the new Jewel movement. And in the formation of the new Jewel movement, you had two secretaries or under secretaries so Maurice Bishop and then the question of joint leadership came Maurice Bishop a unique white man um that was representing Jew became the two joint leaders of the new Jewel movement and that is how the jo the, the new Jewel movement came into being all right I believe we have some questions from the panel Anel will facilitate some of the questions from the University of the West Indies um Anel Thank you, Mr. Livingston, for all this information. Trust me, three quarter of it, I did not know. But um, I would just like to 
go to Mr. Cherubin, please. We heard a lot of what happened before 1979 and so on. So just give us a little bit as time is coming on us on the revel on um, October day. What what happened? Like the lead up to to October. How how did that take place? Well, 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 the, the, the lead up to October 1983. Party, we can't see you at all. So, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, basically, there were problems in the party, and, and again, um, I must, I must admit, I must admit that in prepping me for this program, I, 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 I came on the program to speak as a basic soldier, and not an authority, because to, to talk about what happened in the day, I think you would have to get someone of more, more into that, that whole crisis period, right? But there was obviously problems within the party during that period. There was obviously problems. How it panned out, I mean, there are a number of different stories, but it emerged into two factors, in my own opinion. Right? The prime, I can tell that Mark Bishop was placed under house arrest, and, and eventually shot on the foot, executed together with a number of other people, a number of other people. But um, I, I really would, would appreciate the most specific points of question. Um, because we talk about, I can tell you of me getting involved in, in, the, in the struggle, being a soldier, being on the foot in, in our movement when the armor class come. But I, I think that is a big shift from when Nelson left to reach here now. Because we're talking about, let's not talk about Gary and, and, and the Gary Revolution. And we have not talked about the Green Revolution in terms of the positive uh, maternity benefits, also care program, National Commercial Bank. You, you name all the number of things that happened in the revolution. And then there came that period, four and a half years later, when it's all, all of the people have come deep, 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 deep into crisis. I know my dear brother, you know who have done some deep research and reading minutes and going back with what was. I don't know who we would want to put in here. Right. But um, I, I, I think you really, really need, you have only touched the tip of the iceberg now in dealing with these issues. And I really need a student. I really do believe that you want to something good and you, you seriously need to attract some bigger pieces to deal with a lot of these issues. Yeah. Okay, Paji, we, we, we get the point. Um, I, I think that he made a good point there that we there's an era that is missing before we got to that get to that point. I don't know if uh, Francis would jump in because he would have done so much work in terms of uh, putting that play together. Francis, if you could talk to us about uh, the, the that, that, that leadership that led up to um, that, that, that very dark period in our history. Well, as I, as I said before, that I was never part of the Grenada, the Grenada uh, Revolution. My interest here is that um, when I came back from Jamaica in 1986 as a student, I had that deep interest to write a play so that we could keep history alive. Because looking back at history, history to me is as important as how it shapes, it shapes the future. And with my concern about the direction that Grenada was heading, even after the, the, the fall of the Grenada the Revolution, I got very concerned, and as a playwright, I believe in using the his, um, history and um, drama to to teach the the, the, um, the 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 future generation. Hence, the reason why I embarked on on the project to write a play called Redemption Time. In fact, Paji, I had some discussions with Paji. I had discussions with a lot of other folks who were in um, sympathetic to Gary and also to to the um, to the, the 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 revolution. So that was my link. But in terms of according to that, my song is almost similar to, to Paji. Being part and parcel and the 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 um, dynamics dynamics that happened between Gary and and the revolution, uh, I was not very um awful in a lot of things and hence the reason why that was interjected in the the, um, the play itself, 
because you found that here that a lot of things was happening both on the Gary side and both during the revolution, which we were not um, um, okay with. And uh, hence the reason why I decided here to interject that that um, a people without a sense of, of the history, according to, to uh, Marcus Garvey, is like a tree without roots. So my perspective as I sit here is to, yes, the revolution um, happened, but how does it affect the future? And if, if, we, uh, if we turn our backs on that, what is, what is going to happen is that we are going to be a, um, a lost people as we are um, uh, um, uh, presently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so okay, I, I guess so we're, I guess we're, we're back to um, uh, Mr. Livingston Nelson again. We're, we're trying to fill that gap. And one of the important things, right, uh, one of the main things that, that I think the students and the, the population, the Grenadian po population for that matter, always seem to not have that sufficient information between that time, what led up to that whole uh, dark period in our history, and 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 who are the players? Who are the people? Um, uh, um, um, Livingston, fill us yeah. in. Keep, keep going with, with the story because I think that we need to fill that gap before we even move in to talk heavily about Bishop and the revolution itself. So continue the history as it relates to um, uh, um, 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 uh, Eric, uh, Prime Minister Eric Machugari, and then go I into the revolution part. Yeah, so um, I, 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 so where, where I left off, basically was saying that um, by that time, um, the, the opposition to, to Giri was extremely strong, very, very strong. And so in coming, I think uh, reached on the 1974, 21st January, when we had um, bloody, 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 bloody Monday. But by 1974, Giri had um, then now going into independence. And of course, uh, all the opposition forces, they were scared. They were, they, 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 they were scared that if Gary went, got independence, if Grenada got independence under Gary, there was going to be a serious problem. So there was a major strike. The date of our independence, the flag was hoisted. It was lighted by a car. Uh, the light of a car, the electricity company was on strike. Um, there were some cultural and sexual activities later on, but by and large, um, the country was in shutdown mode because a large number of the persons were resisting um, the fact that we got independence on that area and they were scared. Now, independence meant that Gary now is in charge of both the internal and the external security of the country. So he had full power or more power at his, at his disposal. And because of the train that was taking place, Sorry, in 74, this in 74, when the group of 22 marched against Gary and the country basically almost crippled, um, it led to what they call a, a commissioner, the Duffers Commission of Inquiry. And the Duffers Commission of Inquiry highlighted several abuses. And some of these abuses had to do with the fact that the, the, um, the Mongols gang or the rural council at the time was asked to be disbanded, and that was done. Um, there was a bad man, <laughs> a feared, a feared man in, in, in the police, was the most innocent Belma. Innocent Belma um, was cited in a Duffer's Commission as saying that you should hold no office, no public office. And what happened, that, that, was, that came out in 1975. By 1976, there was an election. And in that election, the opposition forces moved together with the UPP, um, with Winston White, and Hubbard Blaze, and um, together with the NJM, and they formed one block to in order to oust Gary. Unfortunately, they won six of those seats, but they got forty-nine percent of the of the of the votes of the cast the votes. Um, so Gary just won by a small number, but he, while he won by nine seats, yeah. One of the interesting things, although the company um, Innocent Belma had to resign. Innocent Belma then went to run <laughs> as a candidate in that election, and he won by 66% in his constituency. So um, <laughs> that, that, that was the state of that time. So, and then it, so that, that was in 76 um, coming up. Now, again, by that time, the a revolution, and let me just go back, I'm going now into the revolution, and I want to speed up that. A revolution can only be successful when you have a critical mass of 
consciousness and purpose by the population. So the population must be agitated or angry. The population must be totally disenchanted with what they are getting. On the other hand, the other conditionality is that you must have a leadership that is decisive and trusted. The Grenada Revolution had both. People, I mean, at that time, what was happening on the external world? What was happening in, in the Caribbean, in the wider world? What were the things that helped that forge that consciousness in Grenada and the Grenadian youths? It had to do with several things. One, the Black Power movement that was taking place in Trinidad, where people start thinking that, you know, coming out of the colonial era, we must be able to assert our, our, um, our, our culture, our identity. So they wanted that. And so the Black Power movement, with, as I said, with Gedis Granger and, and, and Stokely Carmichael, et cetera, played a major role in the influence that was taking place. The civil rights in, a move, rights in, a move, in America, remember, um, you had the Martin Luther King, you had the Malcolm X, you had those persons, and you had the Black Panther Party. So all these other ingredients were hearing and seeing footage of and talking about. So that helped lift the, lift, lift the level of consciousness of the Grenadian youth. And then you had the, um, the freedom struggle that was taking place in, on the African continent, the apartheid system, the wine Angola, et cetera, the, the movement in Angola and, and those countries on them. And then you have the status of we being termed a colonial, um, a colonial country. And then most importantly, coming back from England, so we didn't go much into that with, with Bishop and, 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 and Cole, who also took part in the 1976 election. So the NJM had formed a group called um, Orel, and Orel was responsible for the teaching um, of um, an organizing of cell that would give a special perspective on the way the development of the taking place in Grenada. So they have adopted what they call the Marxist-Leninist um, ideology. And that was the guide in what they were, they were, they were using. So the left-wing movement around the 76, 77, even 74 era had become something that was taking place that was being talked about in a lot of other Caribbean islands and in the world. And we had those new guys coming in now that had adopted that language, that ideology. Um, and most importantly, what was also taking place externally was the influence of Rastafarianism and reggae music in particular. And I think to a great extent, that part of lifting our consciousness is seriously downplayed in what was responsible for consolidating, radicalizing the youths of Grenada. Because I don't think anything else was responsible for that level of consciousness. Yeah, and then you had the internal force. What was the internal force taking place in Grenada? You had, um, as I say, the Jeremiah Richardson, the shooting, the, the Bloody Monday, the Bloody Sunday, the, 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 the ruin of the Mongols gang. The, and somebody is asking what was the Green Beast. The Green Beast became the, um, after the Duffus Commission of Inquiry, um, Grenada was asked to disband the rural constable. The rural constable was disbanded, but a new body was formed called the Green Beast. Oh, they were wearing green clothes, so that was the Grenada Army. Beast, the word beast came because of the way they dealt or quelled what they considered to be opposition to Gary. So the green, and that term was coined by Alistair Hughes, Green Beast, meaning that those people in green that were more than soldiers. Yeah, if you get the word. Um, so, and I was saying, you also had, a, 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 you know, the professional force. Most of them were trained by Gary, by um, the British at that time. They were a level of professionalism, but it, the, the regular police force was demoralized. So you had all these things taking place inside of Grenada and you have the external force influencing us. What about the leadership? Maurice Bishop was loved, accepted, and admired by the people. He was seen as a leader. And I said the formation of MAP, you have Jewel, you have the Last Adjustice event, um, you had the cell, um, and, and those forces, those forces, um, the, the, even with the beating and the bloody Sunday, the bloody Monday, whatsoever, the leadership still went on to plan to execute the revolution. So the, uh, an arm was formed by the NJM, New Jewel Movement, called the NLA, National Liberation Army. Men went to train in Guyana, somewhere as far as Cuba, to, ask, uh, to get military training to come back onto our Grenada. So the intention was also to have a revolution. Yeah? Um, so let us look at what I call the NGM doctrine. What was the NGM doctrine? Marxism. And what was Marxism? To fight against class. To fight against classism. Um, to fight against economic and political imperialism. To have solidarity with the working class people made it through the world. 
Yeah, so that is what was taking place. That was what, and that was the socialist idea. That is what they were pursuing. Um, so the Grenadian people, in my mind, had equate what they were hearing, the Rasta and the Rasta movement with Bob Marley, whether consciously or unconsciously, the teaching of the revolution, the practice of Marxism, some of the other collided with what I call the reggae music that was taking place at the time. So now you have an appreciation of what was the NGM doctrine. Let us look at what I consider to be the Rastafarian and the doctrine. Rastas believe that the black man or the black woman is African, irrespective of class. So you're African, and that is the base of the solidarity. Whether you were born, whatever you were born, what class? That the salvation of freedom of the black man lies in the acceptance of a black God. And that black God was in the personification of Haile Selassie. Yeah, that is what they believe in. And Rastas believe in fighting Babylon. And fighting Babylon meant that they were fighting all the white oppressors, but all those black people that joined with them. So it, it, there was a kind of closeness between what uh, the Rastas were preaching and what the revolution was saying. So when the revolution was saying we're fighting imperialism, a lot of Grenadian people were hearing something different. They were hearing we're fighting against white colonialism. We're fighting against that. So let, I, I just put a, a table together because I know this one is kind of new for some lot of people. So let me go to the what I call the programs and slogans of the revolution. Um, done with imperialism, forward ever, backward never. Let those who labor hold the reign. The revolution also brought in a lot of low income housing program um, for um, the people, the, the opposing that. The revolution which grow what you eat and eat what you grow. So there was a reliance in agriculture and in agro-industry and agro-processing. The revolution brought in the NYO, National Youth Organization, and for where the youths have to come together again. The revolution had the NYO, National Women Organization. The revolution had the CPE, Center for Popular Education, and the role was to increase literacy and awareness. Um, by the, to, for the entire population. They had a scholarship, increased scholarship to Cuba and the Eastern Black countries. The revolution de developed some television programs and they had books written um, for the first time. So we were trying to produce our own literature. Other games of the revolution include the NIS, National Insurance Scheme, which I said was a, um, the, the Providence Fund was a precursor to the NIS. The building of the international airport. Um, Marketing a national importing board, etc., etc. So that was some of the gains of the revolution. But let me compare. I don't know if you want to take some question now, but just give me one minute, Junior. Let me just compare to say that a lot of what the revolution was preaching, it was conflicting. It was similar, yet it was conflicting. So I think what the Grenadian people were hearing and what the NJ was 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 saying was close, but it was not always the same. And I think later on that became an issue if it starts having problem in Grenada. So Marxism does say, um, the, the NGM was saying Marxism, Leninism, no class. But people like Peter Tosh were saying, no matter where you come from, you're an African. So the unity, so the, the, the class that we were preaching, Grenadians never accepted the fact that we are brothers to the working class of people in Poland or Russia or England, America. The white people in England, we didn't see them as our brothers and sisters. We saw the struggle in Southern Africa. We saw even in Cuba, in Latin America, and the African continent, in the Caribbean. These were our immediate brothers. So no matter where you come from, you're an African. That is what we were hearing, not about the, the, the working class through the world. And then people like Bonin Spear would say, old Marcos Garvey, the doctrine, the preaching, look unto Africa. That was Marcos Garvey. That is what we were hearing. When they say done with imperialism, um, Bob Marley was saying, Africa unite, we are the children of the Rasta man. So we will say Africa is our homeland. When the revolution say forward ever, backward never, Bob Marley was saying, get up and stand up. And Bonnie, Bonnie Willa was saying, we're ready when you're ready, we go tear down Babylon. So the, the similarity was there, but it was different. And we will see how the different come if we have time, I'm not so sure. When the revolution say, let those who labor hold the reign, and they were building low-income houses program in order to empower the working class with the poor. Bonnie Willa was saying, we don't need to struggle too long, meaning it's time that we get our own. When the revolution was saying, grow what you eat and eat what you grow, you have people like Bonnie Spear, 
and then preaching a different philosophy, I think we should live up in the hills. No, I think we should live up in the hills by burning spear. He's saying that the Rasta man must grow his food, eat his food, and the Rasta man must have his own industry. Yes. So there was similarity and there was difference. Um, again, you have the, the, the development of the old television program and the and about the non-alignment movement. Um, again, you have Peter Charles saying, no matter where you come from, in terms of the international association, the socialist of the non-alignment movement, Bonnie Wheeler was saying, rise up and trample the dragon. And who was the dragon? So, much, so, so I, much. I will stop here and then we could, we could continue if we're yeah. taking it. I'm just saying some of the tenets and then, you know, on some of the, the, the gains of the revolution, it consolidated and it made me, and, 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 and junior and listeners, let me just say, on March 13th, it was the most exhilarating um, experience. It was the most empowering experience one could actually imagine as a young Grenadian. For the first time, we felt that we had our destiny in our hand. We were fighting against a power that had oppressed us for hundreds of years. And then we empowered, we empowered, we, 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 we empowered the struggles in South Africa, in Angola, in other places that were fighting against the same oppressive forces. We empowered the black caucus in America and the, 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 the black movements for civil rights equality in, in America itself. So we were a real force during the revolution. That is what the revolution did. It's, it makes us know that there is a possibility that if we come together, we can unite. If we come together, we can overcome our struggle. If we come together, we, we you know we can achieve. So that 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 that, that, that light, that that march, Steve, that was lit by the revolution, empowered so many persons. Yes. Unfortunately, there were so many contradictions in the revolution that um, sooner than later we end up in a different place. We could deal with that in the next program. Yeah, guys, this program evidently would have to be broken up in more than one part. I tell you that right now because there is there are so much information and when the uh, uh, Anel came with the idea of putting this together, I know that we need more time and we will um, provide a lot more time, possibly a part two to get all the information. There is so much information we want to get. But we got a question from, um, from Torrell in regards to this period. Terrell, unmute and ask your question. Well, just a couple of seat, um, questions, right? Um, Mr. Livingston, right? Prior to the Mongoose gang being given the title of royal constable, would you say that their, their actions going about beating people and mistreating people were under direct order of um, Sir Eric Mashugiri, right? And, and secondly, so... so But I'd right. just like for you to just share your mindset of, or, 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 or just tell us about your early growing up. So what what was it like growing up into that era and leading up into that era? How was it your childhood days? So maybe we could get a better understanding of how different things were for like, and, and maybe talk about you know your parents supporting or maybe disapproving of you know, your decision maybe to like study or, or I mean, Mr. you said you actually got involved. So, you know, like what is your reaction to, to um, of your family, right? Of you getting involved with your little bit of involvement, sorry. Uh, permit me to come in here, please, because this is what I can speak to. Why a 20 year old who is one of the breadwinners of our family would leave a job, secure a job, and pick up arms to overthrow illegitimate government. And this is where this is what I can speak to. As a young person getting involved since 1974 in that anti gary movement, what you had first of all was a movement, an opposition to Gary that was organized, you had leadership that had direction. You as young people are a little bit astray. But you have people who guide you and mold you. You can say maybe into what they wanted of you, but they were guiding and molding. We can compare that to the present moment in terms of government and opposition. We may want to. But we're speaking to young university students. And they are in a position, I think, where I was at age 20. Full of energy, 
full of talk, looking for leadership. And we found it in the NGM. As a GBSS boy, a young cadet, we were there following Vietnam, following the, the national liberation struggles in Africa. We were, we were, we were, we were anti-imperialists, even if we didn't know what it means then, but we were following struggles. And there was a leadership to guide us in a particular direction. It wasn't always our revolution. It was a 1976 election. I was 17, 18, and we participated with all our energies of those people. We collected names. We look at voters' lists. We put their people's name off the list. We do all sorts of things in the course of changing the regime, legal regime. People like myself became convinced with the argument that armed revolution was a possibility. And we were underground. As a matter of fact, not all of us came from anti gay heritage. Some of our closest friends and allies were children of Gary. One of my best friends was doing underground work. I was a senior member of the police force. And he had no idea of what was going on in our, in our young children. The irony is that on March 13, he was in the forces before me. So there were a number of contributions, a number of things to love in terms of young people, because there was leadership. There was leadership. And we honestly believed that we were onto something good. And we worked towards it. One of your questions you asked about patriotism, to compare patriotism then and patriotism then. That was patriotism. You would leave a $700 job to join a PRA that pays you $200. You don't know where you're going. You would leave it. You would sacrifice a university education by sending others to get their education, by organizing for others. That, that was patriotism. Let me just put it, let me, let me tr trivialize patriotism. Patriotism then meant waking up on a Sunday morning and going and clean a village far from your home. Well, before in Gary time, the Green Beast would do that. During the revolution, people would clean their village. Today, that is why it's debauching now. And it doesn't matter which government is for. The only difference with the change of government is that the, 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 the bushes might get $5 less or $5 more. But I, I just want to use in terms of patriotism. The patriotism then and the patriotism now is far different. To answer one of your questions that was posed to me in terms of my preparation, did the revolution die with Morris Bishop and maybe a next the programs could deal with that? I would say, yes, the revolution died with me. With, with Morris Bishop. And we may want to even go, and, and, and because we're talking young people, we're talking politics. Did GLB die with Gary? Yes. Will LNP die with Keith Mitchell? These are the questions we have to encompass all of this together with this discussion we have now. So this is not a one part discussion, students. You're onto something good and you need to keep it going. Um, and if another revolution is needed, that's one of the questions asked in, 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 in the document I had before me to prepare. Definitely not an armed revolution. We are out of that stage. There is no Soviet Union. There is no Cuba with arms. So yes, a revolution might be needed now, and a, young, a revolution with young people involved, but not an armed revolution. We are far gone beyond that. Um, just though, let me correct one thing, though, because for history's sake, we need to correct it. Before the revolution, there was no training in Cuba, or by Cubans. You may want to say Guyana, yes, but not the Cubans. Cuban involvement came much, much later, that much I know. I just thought I would butt you with the sucker piece because we are speaking to young people. We, I, I guess this program is not in isolation. It has to do with contemporary politics, knowing what, because if you don't know your history, you, you tend to repeat your mistakes. So um, I just thought I would butt in with the, that, that, that part of it. If it's relevant at all. Audrey, I have another question here that someone just asked uh, on the chat. They said, Mr. Pardew, do you think that it was partisan, uh, patriotism or rather a sense of nationalism? I, I'm not even sure if I know the difference, but it could be both. What is the difference, by the way? Well, that, that, that's also a good question. I guess that's how you basically how you see it. It's in the eyes of the of the beholder, kind of like looks. Um, 
we have a question. I saw someone was calling. Guys, if you have a, a question you want to ask really quick, you could call us, 718-701-5720. We're going to give at least about 15 minutes more into this program, but we will have a part two to this discussion where we have different segments of this conversation because you could imagine, again, we cannot do this in one hour. There's a lot to discuss, and we don't want to forget or leave out very, very important information, even right along in the week ahead we will dive into specific issues of the revolution um and and get that information out there um let me see uh po po uh Paji, go ahead hold on Paji. yeah go ahead because I, I i said yes to the program reluctantly i said yes because i'm so interested in young people getting involved in a serious and positive way but if you are going to ask these deep questions about rise and fall and revolution and whatnot you need to get you see how Livingston come on the party with no comparison with Livingston in terms of preparation. There are people in local politics vying to the cabinet minister, vying to go to parliament that have this information that come and help educate people. Actually, the problem that I found, the problem that I personally found is there's a lot of people with information that is reluctant to share that information. And, well, and that's that Sorry? I said they have to be reluctant to go into active politics. Yeah, well, they're reluctant to come on the program and share it. And I hope that some of them are listening and they're willing to come and educate the young people. You, the folks at you at, at, at the University of the West Indies, Mona, Cavill, and St. Augustine, to give them a, 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 a first-person first look as to what happened in that particular time in our history. It's important. Uh, Livingston Nelson, you, are, you, you were saying something? Well, um, Terrell had asked, but um, I, I, I think what Paji was saying, Paji, let me just say, um, when I mentioned um, Cuba, I, I said um, Guyana and maybe Cuba. So I stand corrected by you. And um, we we'll leave that as the um, main, 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 main one. Um, Terrell was asking me, what was the atmosphere like as a young boy growing up? And as Paji was making mention, most of us grew up in a home where our parents were um, Geary supporters. But um, the younger ones were more radicalized and tend to support the NJM. So most of us grew up like that. Um, and that was what was happening. I think I gave a very good idea of what it was in the state of the of the estate, because we were basically a rural um, economy, mainly agricultural based during that time. So when Gary came and he started walking into the you know the agricultural workers, that is what was happening. And the, the input he made, the, the increase in the pay, the the drop down in condition. That is what was happening. So when the revolution, the, the, the map came, they were, you know, again, looking for those persons. But most of the elder persons, um, our parents, they were already hook and you know, whatever the term is, <laughs> with, with, with Gary. Is, so the younger people are the ones that um, then started supporting um, thing. So I, I said I'd stop in terms of some of the gains. I don't know um, if we're going to have a part two, Junior, if you want me to continue from where I where we're, or if you want to take some more questions, um, because we were looking at the revolution and during the four years of the revolution, we have not reached into, just like how we start with Gary, his prominence, and then we went to show what caused his fall. I think we, we reached to the revolution, and then we wait, we said, okay, that was the hallmark, the gains of the, the goods of the revolution, and, and what caused the fall of the revolution. So I think that is the next part. That is the next area we have to go into. So I don't know if you want me to continue, if you have the time, 10 minutes, or if you want us to just take questions now. So whatsoever you want, I, I'm, I'm cool with it. Well, I'm facilitating, but again, this program is brought to you by the uh, the students, the Grenada Students Association at UWE, and they are running the ship here. Um, we, we are at uh, one hour in. I know, as I said, um, Anel, this would not, um, this would not, uh, we need much more time than that, which we will facilitate at another time. And we saw some calls coming in as well. Anel, do you have any specific questions to any one of the panelists from the student body? Yes. Um, I'd like to direct a question to Mr. Peter Space. In organizing this program 37 years later after the entire revolution, you know, you realize that there are still some people who are still shaky about giving out information. So I'd just like to know, Mr. Peters, when you came back to Grenada and you decided, hey, I'd like to write a play 
to to show people what the revolution was about. What was the experience like in obtaining information on what happened? It's not much of a challenge because I mean I will say that. Uh, um, Podgy was my my, my classmates. I yeah, I relied on on, on Podgy for for um, some information around a character that I was uh, I was um, shaping. So to get getting the information is not much much of a problem. For me, I lived through that era. Maybe I want to say maybe just Podgy, maybe a year older. So I was trying to to put my own personal perspective also on onto the play. What I found eventually when writing the play was uh, some difficulty in the sense of that you had Eric Matthew Geary and you had Maurice Bishop, two of, to me, irrespective of the um, political some spectrum that you that you fall on, to me, these were the most two beloved prime minister that Grenada has ever had. I mean, we, can't, we cannot um, run away from that. And part of the challenges in the play was how do I put these characters on, on, on stage? Who's going to play, to play the role, the bigger than life um, characters? And so what I sought to do was to show how the two political divides at that time, that of Eric Matthew Gary and that of the People's Revolutionary Government, psychologically affected a working class family. And that was part of the crux of, of, the, um, of, of, um, of the play. And uh, it, was, it, it was tough because, of course, on both sides were positive and, and, and there, were, there were negatives. And I tried to, to be balanced. I tried to tell the story. It was a difficult one because, of course, I had colleagues and friends um, who actually were incarcerated. I had folks also who were injured. In fact, my, my wife uh, and Peters was on, uh, not, not my wife then, was on the 4th on October 19th. So it, it, was, it, it was to me, uh, it, it was not the easiest um, project because it took me at least 20 years in order from the time I came back from uh, theater school to 2013 when the play, when the play was, um, was first staged. However, I mean, I know time is running out. And just one point I need to make when Paji was saying here that um, if you don't, if you forget your history, you tend to um, um, repeat the mistakes of the past. And this one thing I want to leave with with, with, um, with you as a student what, uh, is that the revolution lasted four years, seven months, four years and seven months. And I remember after the revolution, there was an election where the, um, the National Democratic, um, the NDC won. They lasted also four years. Seven months, almost the identical time of the revolution, and you had a similar di dynamics. Of course, in the revolution, you had the so-called um, um, joint leadership, Bernard Code and um, and Maurice Bishop. You had the same dynamics in the in the National uh, Democratic Congress with um, Tillman Thomas, and also there was Peter David. Four years, seven months. If we don't um, uh, recognize the, the past and the history, then we are prone to repeat those um, those um, those mistakes. As you mentioned about us needing to remember our history, um, on the same note of persons being a bit reluctant into to giving an open, to be open about the experience, do you think at some point down the line, if there isn't this constant conversation about it, do you think it would um, die out eventually? And also, would you repeat that please in the future sometime? Yeah, I, I, I will repeat it. But one of the challenges I think we have is because Grenada is such a very small island, it's a very small, small country. Unlike you had Luanda, where they had a genocide, I think, what, 23 years ago, 88,000 um, people or 800 and something thousand people were, were murdered. You, there was a legal, a legal framework where they wanted to try the, the offenders, but then they came back to their traditional values and decided, listen, we are going to use our traditional um, system where if somebody transgressed then you can ask for forgiveness and if the, the person who was offended says yes then they will be forgiven but of course you have to contribute to that family you also had in south africa where they had a truth and rec rec reconciliation um uh truth and reconciliation committee or whatever is the, the term is where people were not prosecuted they would say that if you know or some of the atrocities you come forward you speak and you, this was part part of of the of the of the therapy. I remember there was a time where some uh, young man was missing. They eventually found found the skull. They put it in the in, into a, um, a glass case, and the villagers were able to, to, to file past 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 that. So the truth came out. But here, I think what we did, we turned it into a, a legal issue where young men, some of them I know were not in the fort. Of course, others were responsible on for the October 19 atrocities, they were tried. It was a legal issue. Uh, issue. They served their time. So I don't think necessarily that they have uh, that commitment if they don't want to to, to, um, to, um, to speak. So I think one of this, that's one of the challenges because of the 
we are such a small, small society. For instance, if I commit a crime, let's say that nobody does know, or some of the atrocities that happened during the revolution. When I was doing, doing, doing the play, I, I found out one guy was talking about his experience, and you know where he was, I think, a Rastafarian, and he was, his um, hair was being pulled, they were putting bottles between his, his legs and trying to shoot. And I said, are you willing to say that? And he says, no, 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 he, does, um, he doesn't want, want to say that. So I think it's a, it's a problem. I'm not sure if the boat has left us, because say Guinea is a land of lost opportunities. But it is my role here that once you use the arts to teach and to educate and to your you, you piece of history for for um, for the generations um, to come. Thank you, Junior. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you, um, Livingston. Go right are ahead. Are you hearing me? Yeah, go right ahead, Livingston. Are you hearing me? Yes, go right ahead, Livingston. Yeah, I just want to say two things. The first one is that for persons that have not been or seen the play Redemption Time by Mr. Uras Peters, I think it is a real, you know, it's it's a play that everybody should encourage each other to go and see. And, and Mr. Peters, I don't think you should leave here without saying the date, because I believe, although it is short and it cannot take everything into, into context, I, it, it tries as much as possible to give some balance. I've looked at it. Um, I'm not always was in agreement with everything, but there are so many things that in that play that, that, that sum up the period itself. So I don't know, I want to say kudos to Mr. Peters for that effort. And um, as much as possible, I would encourage persons to go and look at that play. Um, again, um, coming back to the topic, now we dealt with some of the goodies, some of the things, and I was just asking, do we have an extra uh, uh, 10 minutes or five minutes so we could look at what I call some of the scenes of the revolution. Because when we look at Gary, we look at some of the scenes, uh, some of the what caused the downfall, we look at the revolution and some of the good things and you know how much it meant for people. Um, but also, I, I don't know if we are going to do a second part, but I would like to just maybe spend five minutes in saying some of the things that um, offended a lot of Grenadians and probably caused the demise of the revolution. Yeah, we, we, we could go we have time? five minutes with, um... Uh, of course, uh, and then we just get conclusion from everyone. Again, guys, we're sorry for the rushing time. We just had a time limit on this broadcast. But however, I promise you, we'll have a part two where we go deeper into other aspects of it and put this all together and compile it so everyone will see the whole chronological story of the revolution. So go right ahead, um, um, Mr. Livingston. Also, we we do have another extra five minutes that we can add to your, to your statements. Right. So let me just say, um, when we are looking at it, we... We mentioned that, um, oh, sorry, yeah, that, 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 um, the, the, the fight against Gary was again about human rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when March 13 came, one of the things that, that I have, man, I unfortunately I have a poem that in the first street chapter that dealt with that, the mood of the people at end. And one, one thing I found extremely um, telling was that. The leadership of the revolution asked people not to seek revenge on the perpetrators. So persons were jailed, people from the Mongols gang. But only one person that was known to be shot. Yeah? So it was not a, a, an era. And I thought for that alone, there were so many kudos going to the leadership of the revolution. To have a revolution, knowing that some people had put you in cell um, and beat you and Blooded you, etc. But then at the day of the revolution, you you refuse, you did not, you know, say, okay, we just execute all of them. But that will go into the revolution, I thought, meant that so many more persons, young people, embraced the revolution because the father was not jailed, the mother was killed, etc., etc., knowing that the people were all Gariites. Yeah? So that was a very wise decision. But lo and behold, soon after, the revolution. Um, suspended adult suffrage. They had promised election, but no longer were we able to vote. Yeah, and I thought that was a real negative step. Freedom of thought on radio and on print was suspended. And that was what they called against Gary. That was one of the things we were saying. Irrespective of what era, there was always paper, there was always election, there was always radio program. For a matter of fact, I don't think any, there was no other country in any region. That had as much demonstration and rallies as the NGM under Gary. And then now they're in power, everybody else, or they were, we were denied um, 
those medium to express those. The constitution was suspended, and with the suspension of the constitution, it made that people are to place. So revolution and made law as they go. Um, um, so, they were to trial. so people could, you know, anybody can jail. Um, let me start, let me start, hold on one second. Let so me hold on one trial. Um, there were no, no checks on. Let me start, hold on one second. So, so the matter of fact, one time, my personal experience, let me say, hold on one second. I'm not sure if I'm the only one that's hearing it, but yeah, I'm not hearing you too clear. Everyone else hearing the same thing I'm hearing? I'm not hearing him too clear at all. It's it, it's song bro broken up like the internet uh, has some okay, issues. Okay, so I took off the fan. I don't know if I... Are, are yeah. you hearing me better now? Yeah, I hear you a little better. Go you ahead. Hear me better now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'll say the constitution was suspended and the people law took its place. Um, So there was no trial, no authority, no checks and balance. Um, for Grenadians. So a soldier, and I would want to use my own personal experience, came in my school, I was a student, I was a member of the militia. They came in my school to arrest me. They didn't find me, yeah? Um, well, I, I made myself, <laughs> I disappeared them. <laughs> um, lo and behold, they found the next guy and they thought it was him, you know? The guy now spending three years in prison. Random soldiers without any ranks, would meet just like on the Mongols gang or you to just meet people on the street and beat them or harass them. People that had no affinity to NGM, the Mongols gang would just meet them and, and abuse them. Just so soldiers in the community would just randomly pick up persons and accuse them of counter-revolutionary activity. And these people actually spent two years, three years, three and a half years in jail like that without any checks and balance. So that was taking place. Um, but the revolution was in March, but by the 15th of October, 20 so persons were, they were arrested, including one named Teddy Victor. Teddy Victor was one of the founders of Ma, of, of, of Jewel. The Jewel was the precursor to forming the new Jewel movement. Teddy Victor from St. David was arrested. Um, Winston White, who was in the alliance with Maurice Bishop, the UPP at that time, um, or the Christian Democratic Labour Party, um, Winston White was arrested and put in prison. Um, you had persons like Rasta Nanan. The Rastas came out in drove and supported the revolution. For a matter of fact, there were people that was Rastas in the army. There were Rastas in the militia. Rasta Nanan was one of those persons that was arrested. Yeah, and, 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 and while they were Rastas, a, a facility was built in Hopeville. And wholesale, like, like, like the Siberian camp, they arrested Rastas. For most people that know about the philosophy of Rastafarianism, Rastafarianism, it was not about picking up arms. Why were the Rastas jailed? Why were they arrested? Why, you know, there was a, a famous guy who refused to eat pork. The pork was put in his mouth and Gordon was pushing, pushing push the pork inside. His whole teeth, his front teeth was mashed up. His name was from so all right all right so we have any problem in jersey bring that winston um broke off from tivoli or um a group of soldiers that run from the front airport escape because this was labeled as counter-revolutionary one guy named winston broko was asked to give information about them he said he doesn't know his scrotum his scrotum was split. Hot pepper was put into it to try to force him to confess. These were some of the atrocities that was in. Ralph Thompson was poisoned in jail. Dennis Charles was shot because he was peeping in a hole from his cell while in prison. His whole hand, finger came out. So these were some of the things that happened. Tran Philip, who led the attack on the Trubler Barracks on March 13th, 1979, he was gunned down execution style because a bomb went off at the queen's park at a rally it was suspected that it was trans philip it the troops move on to his home got him down later only to be told that trans philip had nothing and was nowhere close to that had nothing to do with the bombing affairs at, at the queen's park um so over 100 persons from tivoli and the bomb street area they were arrested there was a one lady named, she's still here today. She was born and christened in prison. People were picked up in Mount Church, put on one of the, what they call the big, and a truck. And then there was, I mean, it was a 
I was, it's like shackled slavery, brought to prison and back. And back. Whole group of villagers, mothers, daughters, son was picked up and jailed. And there was no trial to the way that was happening. At the end, during the, the height of the touch that was taking place during the Gary era, there was not one person. There was never at one time you had over 50 or 15 prisoners in, in, in prison. For the whole era, with the number of persons arrested as persons giving problem or trouble, the number never crossed 300 under the Gary era. The revolution had 3,112 persons jailed within four and a half years of, of the reign. So the revolution actually made Gary look like a saint in comparison to the level of torture, in terms of the suspension of the constitution, in terms of the lack of che um, um, you know, checks and balances, in terms of the persons that were just empowered to do things um, against you randomly. Of course, everybody, um, most of us should be aware of the closing down of the newspaper where people like Tillman Thomas, that was the leader of the National Democratic Congress, let me play, and those persons, they were jailed because they tried to have a newspaper. Junior Judge, your program um, probably could have gone on, but you couldn't get people like me openly talking on more than one session if we had the level of technology that we have now during the reign of the revolution, because it meant that sure. people like me were, were going to be silent. And these yeah. were some of the, the contradictions that took place and, 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 and the conflict. So while people was in love with the whole idea, you know, of the revolution, this utopian idea, in the long run, some of the other, the leaders has lost their way in reaching out and trying. And, 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 and closing, I just want to say, I believe that because the remedy, the solution to solve our problem in the revolution was foreign, it was not a locally initiated plan for development. It was a foreign imposed plan. So no, every, every time there was an issue, we went back into Marxism, Leninism to see how to deal with the Grenadian opposition. And every time it was always more heavy manners, not mm -hmm. rather reaching out, talking to our people. So these were some of the issues I had to highlight that to say that if only we had stayed on course, irrespective of what you think about Greenhead and Gary, it was a homegrown form of development, but the revolution was a foreign impose method of how to deal with the issues that we were facing and the kind of development we would face. So I know we don't have time, I would stop here. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and I promise you that we will convene this conversation, Livingston Nelson, uh, in extensive in extensive nature for the next week or so on Ride Along and our other, other programs on this platform. We thank the Anel, uh, Terrell, and of course, Giselle, uh, and um, everyone who, that put this here together. Let's just go right around and get all the panelists back and get a final closing word from the panelists. Um, starting over with uh, uh, Paji. Yeah, I just want to, once again want to compliment the, the, the young students for the effort and to let them know that it's just the tip of the iceberg. They have a lot more to do in terms of this, and they can be the catalyst that brings a lot, a lot of closure to this entire period and the rise and fall, the good and bad of the revolution. Because as we are still I mean, there was tremendous things in the revolution, and, 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 as well as good, and there was a lot of indifference. But I think it's a, a good program, a good start. You need to seek out um, people with knowledge, people with information. You need to seek out the more analytical people, because some of these things is not just, I can tell you with my experience, you have folks who can analyze it and conclude. Um, events are happening, why is happening? In other words, there is a saying that violence breeds violence. So the fact that it starts with gun must end with gun. And, and, and you need to, to go deeper into them. But most of all students, you are young people, you are aware I and my friends were in 1974, 75, 76, 77, 78. Some of you are interested in politics. You need to seriously look at where we come from, look at the mistakes, and make sure we do not make the same mistakes. Young people by themselves cannot do it alone. Young people, in, 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 in just in 
Elte Skelter Manga, can you? You need for want of a better term, a vanguard. And that, I think, is what is missing in the airport. Finally, I want to say that I do believe Terry Nelson speak of Gary to do. I trust I live long enough to hear him speak about Mr. Mitchell to in years to come. You know, what the goal of him and, and, and whatever bad. But I, I, I think we have this tendency of wise people are alive to paint them with that broad demon brush, demonize them, and not see some of the good places. I told you about both in 20 years and I helped bring him back in 2018. I have no apologies for either of them. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Poaji. Um, uh, Mr. Francis Rias Peters, your closing word, sir, on this part one of this discussion. Yeah, all I got to say is that um, the history is a history. We don't have to like it or to agree with it, but we have to learn from the, the, the gains of the past and also from um, from the mistakes. Let me compliment the students here because I'm saying here, it's saying this of them, courage skips a generation. The revolution was about 40, 41 years ago. They say a generation is about 40 years. And I must compliment them for taking this step because I have to remind them that even Eric Gary, Bishop, even Keith Mitchell, a lot of the, even the world leaders, when they started started out as leaders, they were in the in their early twenties. And I'm sort of uh, very very hopeful that what I'm seeing here among among our young people, that is something here that is going to set a new chapter and, and a new era for for as we move forward in, in the world, in Guinea, in the Caribbean. There's one thing I must say that um, Livingston mentioned about the play Redemption Time and the play. I don't hope that people believe the play is coming up. Soon, there's another production that's coming up at the end of the month called The Burial of Miss Faitland, the 31st of October and the 1st of November at Spice Baskets. Um, that's, that's the play that will be, um, will be staged. But I look forward to the um, further conversations. It's necessary. And thanks very much for having me on. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, to close it up from the student body end, we now go to Giselle. I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all our guests, Mr. George Podgy Cherbin, Mr. Livingston, Kruma Nelson, and Mr. Francis, and also Mr. Junior George for allowing us to use this platform to broadcast our events. We are so grateful to you for this. Mr. Nelson gave us a very descriptive look at the revolution, I'm sure you were all able to picture it. He educated us on, our, on the revolution in a way that we were never able to give us the details of what occurred. Paji made it known what patriotism was back then and the need for the involvement of the youth in controversial and political topics, maybe even a non-violent youth revolution. Mr. Urias Peters, though distant, from the actual events that occurred that day, he was still able to obtain a nitty gritty from his peers to provide to us today that deeper look into the Grenada Revolution. I also want to thank the viewer for being here with us today for making it very interactive. I thank you. And I hope that y'all, everyone would return for the part two of this. You can give us your questions at um the facebook page for Grenada student association Citizen, and the instagram page for Grenada students association saint augustine and mona in jamaica all right thank Bye. you so much thank you so much um and thanks to the entire student body uh we just get a closing word now from anel morning i would just like to thank everyone for supporting this event um all the panelists mr nelson mr Cherbin, and mr francis mr george especially for having us here and to all the persons who would have commented and saying things like yes they need a part two or three even a four we thank you and if you know of any persons who are who may be willing to share their knowledge with us on on that part in history we would appreciate you giving us some feedback on that so you can reach us reach out to us on instagram at gsa underscore sda that's instagram 
and GSH underscore Mona. That's Instagram as well. And Facebook, GSA St. Augustine. We are a very prominent, we are very promising associations that wants to see the best for our members. And we just want to ensure that we keep the Grenada culture alive and make sure that we are able to represent ourselves fully when we're out there. All right. Thank you so much. And for, uh, last but not least, closing words from Terrell. All right. I, I, I just want to see that I am a bit afraid, one that just as our patwa tongue was lost, our patwa tongue was lost, that the, the, the history of the revolution would be lost also. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Right? So this is why I really commend this initiative, and I look forward to the sequels. Absolutely, absolutely. Again, guys, thanks for watching and thanks for being a part of our discussion. This is part one of this discussion. We know that there is a lot more that needs to be said, uh, and it will be. We'll dedicate our time right here on Ride Along to um, provide as much information as possible. I'm making an appeal to the people who are in Grenada or people that are moved out from Grenada that have first-hand knowledge as to what happened during the time of the revolution to please reach out to us to share your story uh, not only for yourself uh, but for the thousands and millions of people who need some closure who need some understanding as to what happened during the time of the revolution it will definitely assist those students and everyone else uh, with some closure and information Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for being a part of our program. This is this is a special ride along live GSA uh, program. Check out and stay tuned for part two coming up pretty soon. Thanks again for watching, guys. Peace out. Bye bye. So much black letters of history Man, I show that many people will agree If I say she's blessed by the Almighty Oh God The standard of skills and talent we have down there in this land It is too much for me to mention hey. The level of education keep rising to higher hands And if I'm wrong, don't say that I'm right I want to tell everybody I'm so proud of my country Don't care wherever I may be I say Grenada belongs to me No country in this world Could do the things That my country would do for me I am proud I love my Grenada My homeland forever Sing the chorus louder Tell about Grenada The land of my grandfather But a lot of folks don't realize If we learn to pull we hand To the little country we can We could make Grenada a better land